What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is go over three different examples of rational expressions that don't have a vertical asymptote that a lot of students always think or confuse that they do actually have a vertical asymptote. So let's just kind of go through a quick review of why we have vertical asymptotes. And then what are these kind of mistakes that, you know, students usually make when they look at an expression and think, oh, there's going to be a vertical asymptote here. So just a real quick, like, you know, if I had like one over X, remember we can't divide by zero right? So X in this case cannot equal zero. That is the value. Like zero is the value that makes my denominator equal to zero. So therefore I'm going to have an undefined value. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to create a vertical asymptote, right? So this graph is going to look something like this. It approaches a zero from the left hand and right. Now, sometimes my denominator gets a little bit more crazy, right? So if I have like one over, you know, an X, let's say a minus one, all that simply does is just shift the graph over one unit to the right right? Because now X cannot equal, now it's not X cannot equal zero because you can plug in zero, right? Zero minus one is negative one. One divided by negative one works. However, now X cannot equal one. So what happens here is my vertical asymptote gets shifted over, but it still is existing here, right? It's just X can now not equal a one. So at X equals one is we now have this new vertical asymptote where the function is going to be undefined. And that's the main thing I want you to take away from this. When we're trying to find the vertical asymptotes, one thing we're looking for is when the function is not going to be defined. However, a function cannot be defined and it not be a vertical asymptote. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm good, that's exactly what I'm going to explain in this video. But let's go and take a look at the first example and a very common one where students a lot of times think there's a vertical asymptote um, just because it is a rational expression. All right, and that me expression like this. So here I have y equals three x squared plus six x plus nine all divided by three. All right. And I think a lot of times once we, you know, kind of get in depth and like kind of get deep into teaching with rational expressions, seeing fractions, students just kind of get so happy and say, you know, since I have something in the denominator, like that's going to be my vertical asymptote, right? So let's say the vertical asymptote is going to be when X equals a three and no, right? No, please do not do this. Okay. The important thing guys is the vertical asymptote is like for what values of X, right? Make the denominator equal to zero. We just have a number in the denominator here, right? Which is three. Now, again, like what's happening with this three is there's a couple of ways we could write this. You could rewrite divide by three as the same thing as multiplying by three X, or sorry, multiplying by one third. So plus a six X plus nine, or you could also distribute this three into each and every one of these terms, right? Because just by applying division here into um, each and every one of these terms, you can actually simplify this. Now, I don't care what which way you really want to do that, but what I want you to understand is when you do like simplify this expression, this rational expression, what you're actually going to get is an X squared plus a two X plus three, which guess what is a quadratic, right? So, and hopefully you recognize like a quadratic equation is going to have that parabola approach. Now, I don't know exactly what this graph is going to look like. It doesn't look like it's any going to be anything fun, but it's going to look something like this where there's no vertical asymptote, right? There's no discontinuities. No matter what value you plug in for X, it's always going to be defined. When we're looking for vertical asymptotes, we're, we're looking for values that when you plug them, <laughs> we're, when we're looking for vertical asymptotes, we're looking for values that make the denominator equal to zero. This denominator is never going to be zero. So whenever you have just a number in the denominator, you don't have to worry about your vertical asymptotes. All right, now let's go and take a look at a, another example here. And in this example, I have y is equal to a x squared minus 6x minus 7 all over a 2x plus 2. Okay, um, now in this case, you can definitely say, all right, we have some numbers in the denominator. Um, we have some values in the denominator that, uh, that we have some numbers in the denominator that actually could make sorry, we have some values for X that can make my denominator equal to zero. So typically what I always tell students to do is like, well, to find the vertical asymptotes, just set your denominator equal to zero, right? And then go ahead and solve. So you subtract a two on both sides. Two X is equal to a negative two, divide by two, divide by two, X equals a negative one. And you say vertical asymptote is that X equals negative one. And guess what? It's not. Now, how do we know this? Well, one thing you should always do before you find the vertical asymptotes is simplify, right? That's what we did up here. We simplified this rational expression by either dividing by three or multiplying by the one third, right? And that's exactly what we want to do in this example. We want to factor this, like we have a quadratic and what we simply want to do then is typically when you have a quadratic, look to factor it. Um, so I can factor this as a product of two binomials. Now, what I'm looking at here is I could probably factor this as to X minus a seven 
times an x plus one, right? What two numbers multiply to give you negative seven, add to give you negative six. I think that is going to work out. And then over here, I could factor out a two and I'd be left with a x plus one. Now what's happening here, what I want you to see is the x plus ones divide out. So the simplified version of this is again, we have this x minus seven divided by two, right? So you could write it like that or you could write it like this, doesn't really matter. But what I want you to see is this x plus one actually divided out. Now, what that means is that is now a, what we call a removable discontinuity, not a non-removable discontinuity. So when you can get something divide out, it doesn't mean it goes away. Like it's still a part of the answer. Like negative, when x equals negative one, it still makes this function not defined. However, the, it is not going to, when you look at this like graphically, it's not an asymptote anymore. What this is is actually what we call a whole. So our whole is gonna be, is gonna take your removable discontinuity and then set it equal to zero but in this case is x equal to negative one. So what we actually have here is we have a rational expression where at negative, I'm sorry, a linear equation where at x equals negative one, we actually have a whole. So, you know, again, I'm not trying to graph this correctly. I'm just trying to show you what the graph would look like, but there's no vertical asymptotes here. It's actually going to be in a linear equation with a whole at x equals negative one. All right, let's go and take a look at one more example of a rational function that does not have vertical asymptotes. So in this case, we have y equals, let's say a 4x squared plus a 7x plus three divided by a 4x squared plus a 16. Okay, Whew. Um, hmm. this one looks uh, pretty interesting here in this case. Now, one thing I'm always going to recommend, like we could go ahead and try to factor this one out, you know, if you want to, um, you know, kind of look into like, if anything's going to factor out in the numerator denominator, but I kind of already noticed something that is um, always going to be an issue, like in this case. And again, like I'm just trying to show why it does not have a vertical asymptote, or what would be a possibility here, or why it doesn't have a vertical, yeah, vertical asymptote. Remember, vertical asymptotes are the values that make your denominator equal to zero, right? So if we're trying to find these values that make it equal to zero, one, you got to have a variable in the denominator, right? Number two, you got to make sure it's not a whole. And number three, you got to make sure there's actually values that are real numbers. So in this case, like this might seem lot. And let's say you're like, hey, you know what? I don't really want to be factoring something out. Um, but I'm not sure if this has a vertical asymptote because sometimes you can do the math in your head. Sometimes you maybe need to work it out. But another possibility I want you to look at is what about when you cannot, what about when there's no real numbers that make your denominator equal to zero? So my point in this case is let's go ahead and solve. Let's set your denominator equal to zero. So 4x squared equals a negative 16 divided by four on both sides. x squared equals a negative four. Now, when you introduce the square root, hopefully you recognize, remember when you introduce the square root of a negative number, that's going to like, that's not going to be a part of your real number system, right? So x is going to equal a plus or minus i times not two. That's going to be plus or minus two i. Right, so now we need to use the complex number system to be able to take the even root of a negative number, right? So again, like if you're thinking about this as a graphical approach, like we can't graph these on the real number line, a plus or minus a two i. So a lot of times what we just say is no vertical asymptotes, right? Because we have to have a real number for us to have a vertical asymptote. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is three examples for vertical asymptotes or for rational expressions that rational equations with no vertical asymptotes. I hope it was helpful, and if it was, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.